All right, next parallel circuit, guys, number six. So we have three different circuits here, and they're they're set up so they can show you the three different ways of finding your parallel values. So if we just have the first one, let's label this guy as A, right? Um, for that one, we have two different resistances. We could do the, re the reciprocal equation, but if you just have two different values, you can always use the product over the sum. Okay, so what is the product over sum? Well, it is the exact same as the reciprocal equation, it's just in a different form. So for this guy, our total resistance, the product means the multiplication, so we can go 3 times 6 over the sum. Well, 3 plus 6 would be the sum. Right, so for that guy, we would have 18 divided by 9. And our total resistance for this circuit right here is going to be 2 ohms. Okay, we knew that it was going to be less than the 3 ohms, right? So we can do it quickly and easily with the product over the sum. Multiply the values over the addition of the values to give us our totals for the circuit. Beauty. Okay, next one. For this one, we could do product over sum with these guys and then do product over sum again, but hang on, we've got 60 ohms, 60 ohms, and 60 ohms, right? So these guys are all the same resistance value. Right, this one for the product over sum, we did this guy for two different values. Okay, if they're all the same value and they have the same voltage, well, they have the same voltage because each of these guys, right, is tied into the exact same spot. So they're going to have the same pressure across each of them. And if we look at Ohm's law, then if the voltage is the same and the resistance is the same, well, then the current is going to be exactly the same as well. So current will equally go down each of these three different paths here. So if we have um, the same resistance value over and over and over, then our total resistance here is just going to be equal to the resistance value divided by the number of paths, right? Because current is going to equally go on each of those paths. So if we take the 60 ohms, in this case, divide by the three paths, then our total, our total resistance is going to be 20 ohms. Excellent. Okay, the next one's dirty. It's awful. We got one, two, we got four different resistance values. You might as well do that dirty reciprocal equation. Okay, so for this one, we could do product over sum, find that value, do product over sum again, do product over sum again. We can't do this one where we take the resistance and divide by the number of paths because they're all different values. So we're pretty much stuck doing the reciprocal equation. For this guy, our total resistance is going to be equal to 1 over, depending on your calculator, you may need to use double brackets, 1 over 5. Let's make these get a little bit bigger. Plus 1 over 10. Plus 1 over 20. Plus 1 over 30. Okay, before we put this into the calculator, we know that we are looking for a value on the calculator that's going to be less than 5 ohms. In a parallel circuit, the total resistance is always less than the smallest value. Okay, when you punch that into your calculator, then it gives you a resistance of 2.6086 ohms. In my class, we said that we were using three decimal places, so we'll keep this guy at 
This 8 is greater than 5, so we'll round up, so we'll do 2.61 ohms. Okay, so three different ways you can find the total resistance in a parallel circuit. Product over sum if you just have two values. If you have a number of uh, different paths but all the same resistance, then do the resistance divided by the number of paths. And then when you have all kinds of different paths here with different resistance values, you're going to get stuck doing the reciprocal equation.